like blurry. I don't know why. It's good. <laughs> In the shop. Oh wait, put the tripod down. Perfect. Yeah, do something like that again. Like going like that. been to Italy, France, Ireland, Wales, Switzerland, Germany, Netherlands, Mexico, and I can't wait to go to China in March. You have a little over an hour of footage total. Sometimes when people ask me what my interest in fashion is, I just tell them that it's ready to wear, which is true, but it's not the full truth. I grew up in a very conservative, small suburb. I knew what it meant to have to hide things about yourself in order to keep yourself safe. So I often don't tell people that I want to make gender neutral fashion. I want to do everything that I can to make sure that all people have the ability to walk into stores and know that they belong there and that their needs matter. The situation in Venezuela was getting really rough, so my dad decided to come here so that we could have a better future. Whenever one of our sports team would play, we would forget about everything through sports. I wanted that same feeling into my aesthetics as a designer. The last project that I did was called Vino Tinto, Cross with a Pearl. So after I made the project, I tagged some of the Venezuelan athletes that I follow on Instagram. And then one of them actually asked me if I could make one of the uniforms. And I was like, oh my god, oh my gosh. I couldn't believe it. This is a rare denim set. It's really special because it has an embroidered sunset scene on both the jacket and the top of the pants. I own a business called Ramblin' Rose Vintage. I love the history that is told through vintage pieces. These shoes are all carved out of wood and leather. This dress is seen on Mad Men. I am absolutely obsessed with these sleeves. It's the epitome of 1960s. Perfect. So I like to take a lot of design and garment construction classes because I really like working with my hands. My mom and all of her sisters are all seamstresses, and in Mexico, they will get contracted to make quinceanera dresses. I slowly started falling in love with this whole process of creation. Yep, okay, you're good. This is the place where I've spent a lot of my all-nighters. And this is my desk. It's where I got the call, telling me that I had won. One of my biggest challenges has definitely been getting my permanent residence green card. I essentially had to prove to a judge that I was worthy of staying in this country. All my actions and like my grades and awards. It was kind of scary because it's basically your entire future. I feel that I have so much to look forward to and so much to give being in this country. My biggest challenge has been when I was 17 years old, a family member of mine committed suicide. This is the worst thing that I've ever had to go through. Once you lose one in that manner, um, you really realize how much people can be hurting and you don't know about it. Just keep posing. Just like wave and show it. I get asked how I'm so positive all the time, and I'm like known as the girl who can give a pep talk and who's always smiling and all that. Um, but I definitely think it's almost because of that incident that I try to be um, just that bright light for other people, to just to try to let everyone know how, how important and how loved they are. Three years ago, I decided to come out of the closet and tell the world I was gay. 
and I think that has been the hardest thing I've ever done and the bravest thing I've ever done. My first project, I made this jacket and it's covered with names of people that I told and came out of the closet and it even says the world up here and on the inside is the pride flag and it was my way of taking ownership of my sexuality and who I was as a person and combining it with what I love to do. So this is UGA's Chapel Bell. It's like another pillow at the University of Arizona. And as you can see, people have been singing it nonstop because it's finished finals. And it's supposed to ring it when you have something good happen to you. So I actually read it when I became a finals for the scholarship. I got a text from my academic advisor. Oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> It was amazing, I was crying, I told my mom, I told my uncle. I'm humbled and grateful for this scholarship. It is instrumental to my story. It's really life-changing. It's a blessing. And thank you very much. Thank you.